Hey, how's it going everyone? Just a quick video, walk around video of the new Honda XADV. Uh, it's my new pride and joy. I only took delivery of it yesterday. Um, uh, very lucky I think to get one in red. Um, I know there's not too many videos out there of the uh, machine at the moment. They're fairly new. Uh, so I thought I'd give people a quick walk around. Unfortunately, you can't ride it, or won't be riding it today, because I'm not set up with a decent enough camera. And I do apologize about the quality of this uh, video. It's been shot on a uh, iPad with a pretty poor sound quality. So what we've got is the, uh, say the Honda XADV. Um, it's a 750cc, uh, based out of the uh, Honda NC 750 range engines. Um, I think they make about 54 brake horsepower. Um, fully automatic using the Honda DCT uh, gearbox, um, so obviously fully controlled by the controls, it's automatic uh, on the handlebars. Uh, no foot controls at all, it is basically a scooter. I know a lot of people don't like calling it that and they want to call it a bike or a bike or a scooter, it doesn't matter, it's whatever you think it is. Chain driven, um, uh, it's not uh, belt driven or um, uh, driven like a traditional scooter, it does actually have a chain, although the chain is kind of enclosed. I've heard some people say they think it's enclosed for the looks, um, but I do think it is probably for the protection of the chain. Um, there is uh, obviously a little bit there at the bottom, but uh, generally it's enclosed. Um, while we're down here, we'll look at the wheels. The back wheel is a 15 inch uh, wheel, spoked wheel, but it is a tubeless tyre. As you can see, the spokes there um, just sort of poke out the side. Um, really good looking wheels for a, a scooter type of a bike of this kind. Um, not sure about cleaning them, might be a bit fiddly. We'll find that out later on. Um, so 15 inch wheel on the back, um, 17 inch wheel on the front, um, double disc uh, um, brakes. And I've got to tell you, the brakes are absolutely superb. Um, absolutely no problem with the brakes whatsoever. Um, coming from a bike, myself, I had a, uh, a Yamaha MT-07 most recently. Um, you know, you really start to, to notice the, the, uh, the sort of uh, quality coming from a very budget bike into one that's uh, obviously a bit more mid-range. Um, the suspension I've found is to be excellent as well on this. I've only done 100 or so miles, but I did take it off on some uh, um, sort of gravelly type country paths yesterday. And I've got to say the suspension is absolutely superb. Such a, such a difference from the, uh, the Yamaha MT-07. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's got absolutely no problem. I believe the suspension at the front, they're up to upside down forks, um, obviously painted gold. I don't think they're the same as the ones that are on the Africa Twin. I'm obviously uh, meant, meant to look, look, look that way. Um, coming up, some nice features on the bike. You've got a fantastic windshield. Best windshield I've, uh, I've had on any bike, whether that be aftermarket or um, manufactured. Um, it's fully adjustable, it has five settings. Um, it's real easy to adjust, um, simply uh, by pulling out this little clip here. Um, I'll do this one handed so maybe that is it. And it will actually just go up and down into five settings. Um, I tend to ride it on the top setting. Um, I've had, I've seen the 100 miles I've done, you, you literally feel a little bit of wind on your arms. It takes it totally off my helmet, my body, my shoulders. And I'm six foot one, so I'm not a short guy. Um, but I uh, can't speak highly enough of that, uh, that windshield is superb. Um, size wise, it's, it doesn't really come across in the videos, but it's a big bike. I mean, I'm, silly, I'm six foot one, it's an 820 millimeter height in seat. Because it's a wide seat, you know, it's a scooter derived seat, I guess. Um, because it's wide, you know, my six foot one, my, my tiptoes, you know, are uh, literally touching the floor as I, uh, as I sit on the seat. So, you know, it does take, uh, it's not really for a beginner, this bike, you know, you, you need to have a little bit of experience. And it's not a light bike either, it's a, a 238 kilograms wet, so, you know, it's, it's not light. But what I will say is you really don't feel that, that weight because it's, uh, it's slung so low down. Um, previously, I had an NC700X a few years ago and I found that bike heavy I'll be honest you know I know it's not a heavy bike but at that point I was pretty much a beginner rider um, this one I find much much easier to handle um, obviously probably helps with no foot controls uh, as well um, bike came with a top box it's a Honda top box it's a plastic box with an aluminium 
properly on the top and see the logo there. Um, is it an impressive top box? Not really. I mean, it's I, I had a fitted Yamaha top box on the MT-07. It was it was a, it was a more quality uh, um, item than this. The plastic in here is a little bit um, uh, light wearing. Having said that, it comes with the bike. It's a freebie as far as I'm concerned. So so what? Um, just chuck your wet weather gear in. It's absolutely fine. Um, okay, so just a few quick features. Uh, the bike itself doesn't have a key. You have a key fob, which I've got in my pocket. I'm not going to get it out because I can't do this one-handed. Quite simply, it's uh, once you're within a certain distance of the bike, the little light will come on when you, you start it up, and you've got a few options there to, to mess around and get the bike started. Um, it's, a, it's a good function. It takes a bit of getting used to. Um, you know, getting your head around the fact that you, you don't have a key to put in there. Um, uh, uh, but, but uh, you know, it's no, no biggie, it's quite easy to use. Very, very cool screen, I think. Um, lots of information there. Some of it totally useless. I mean, who needs to know the dates when you're riding along on your bike? Um, but if you do, you've got it Ooh, just down here. Um, you've got fuel consumption at the top here. You've got mileage down here, temperature, what gear you're in, what, whether you're in the drive system. Um, it's really uh, you know, a very, very clear display. You can't fault it, and it's right in the right position. I mean, when you're sat on the bike, you, you, you just have to glance down. You don't even, you know, it, it's, it's fully in front of you, all the information that you need. Um, uh, storage under the seat. Let's have a look here. So if we switch this back into the middle here, you can open in the, uh, the seat and the fuel flap here and you hear that click. So we come back here, it's got some good storage underneath. It's not the hugest amount of storage, it fits a full face helmet in there pretty comfortably. Um, I've got a few bits just laid in the back here. It also comes with a 12 volt uh, socket just down here. Um, putting it under the seat is a bit strange, I would have preferred to have it up on the handlebars somewhere so that you could put your sat nav straight into it, but I'm sure there's an option for me to add that later on. Um, seat comes up on a strut so it holds itself up. It's not the massive biggest uh, amount of space to get in and out, but it's not bad actually. I mean a lot of scooters. You know, uh, um, if, they, if the seat tends to tip up from the front to the back, you tend to get a bit more easier access, but um, it's not bad at all, I can't complain. So I'll just put that down here. But generally, I absolutely love this bike. It's something that I've been waiting for a long time. Um, I've heard and read lots of people saying, well, who's it aimed at? What's the point of it? Why would you have a bike? Surely if you're gonna spend this sort of money, you'd go out and buy an Africa Twin or something, you know, a, a, a Triumph or um, you know, even a, a bit more money, you can go and get yourself a BMW. But the bottom line is, well, maybe you don't want a bike. I've always been a scooter person by heart, um, but I do like the ability to be able to just take it down whatever path I want to go down, whatever road I want to go down. I'm not kidding myself, this isn't an adventure bike. I wouldn't try riding it across the Sahara Desert. But would I go touring on it? Absolutely, would I? and I'm going to be doing that um, as much as possible. You could load this bike up with all your luggage, um, enough, enough, uh, enough stuff to get you going. It's got a powerful engine. It's going to go all day. It's comfortable. There's no problem with going anywhere on this bike. And I'm going to be using it I think, in the next uh, couple of years to go, hopefully, all over Europe. Um, that's if they still let us in um, after Brexit. But we'll see about that. That's another story. So um, it's just a quick walk around. Um, don't want to bung you up with facts and figures they all are fully available if you like the bikes if you if you if you're into bikes and you live near a honda dealer get yourself down there and have a go on it because um i, I think it's going to be a bit of a marmite bike for a lot of people in looks i think you're either going to love the looks or hate them you're either going to love the idea of it or you're going to hate it but i would challenge many people to ride it and say that was a poor experience I understand it's not for everybody. If you're into your sports bikes, if you're into your big Harleys or your big you know, uh, cruisers, yeah, it's probably not for you. But I don't think you'd ride it and say that's a bad bike. It really is a superb machine. Um, hopefully later on I'll be adding some more videos riding it and going out and about. But uh, it's just a little look. If you like the video, click the like button for me, please. If you don't like it, well, don't worry, move on to something else. But either way, have a good day.